The global and historic traditional view of epic projects is always, from the majority viewpoint, that it's daunting and impossible, and the only people who have ever accomplished these take the word impossible as an invitation. Is it impossible? No, they're doing it. Can it be done? Absolutely can be done. They're close. The valley makes most people feel pretty small. You know, you drive in, and all of a sudden, your size is put into context by giant canyons and 3,000 foot walls above your head. And you don't get that kind of perspective very often. Like every 10 days, two weeks, I need to like get out of Yosemite actually. It's not like spring here. Things just get dark. It goes from like being humbling and inspiring to actually like claustrophobic. You know, drive back to Santa Rosa for a day or two and do some laundry clean up my truck or something, get refreshed. We're at Mama Jargison's house. <laughs> we just bailed from the valley for a little R&R &R for a couple days, clear the head. It's important to stay fresh and sometimes you just gotta get out every once in a while, you know? It's gross, I can see the oil on yeah. your hair. <laughs> okay, you I'm totally being dirty? a mom. You think this is dirty? Oh, I think he probably had been working on the Dawn Wall for a couple of years before I knew about it. What that really meant, oh, it's one thing to have a project. I didn't realize how special this project was. There's nothing you can say. He's following his bliss. He's had that ever since he's been a baby. He wanted to go to Vertex every moment of every day. He lived there. He was just, I don't know, probably 14 at the time, and you know, just basic, your basic bratty little kid running around the gym. And then pretty much the next time we saw him, he was just crushing B7, and we were like, what, what, how did that happen? All of a sudden, the bratty little kid was climbing really hard out of nowhere. He has a great, fierce, open-faced passion for climbing and for the art of the natural world, as it is expressed through climbing. He would talk about the heart of the thing, not the difficulty of the thing. That was a really powerful difference. It's not that he's an ego-free zone. However, he subordinates that in favor of being compassionate and giving and thoughtful and creative, this is really unusual, and that is the quality of leadership. I've climbed on El Cap very little prior to calling Tommy to see if he wanted a partner for the Don Wall. Kevin had never climbed a big wall project. He was a badass boulder. I mean, his idea of tall was you know, city building size. The tradition is you work your way up and you do this and that. He was basically, well, I just jump on, fly boy, the hardest problem on earth. The transition into uh, getting on El Cap in some ways was a relief to people because it's like, well, at least he's got a freaking rope on now, you know? <laughs> the impact that Tommy's presence in Kevin's life has had, the fact that Tommy invited Kevin to be a party to this vision and then let Kevin move in and have it become his vision as well, um, has been phenomenal. I started on it when I was 25. There's a little bit of internal pressure just to get it done. You know, you dedicate five October, Novembers in a row. We're in the same spot every year, on the same wall, on the same route. I can't tell you how many times I've thought about what it would feel like to do Pitch 14 on the push. You're probably six days in. You've got multiple pitches of 514 below you. I'm gonna feel light on my toes, but solid enough to stand on anything. And it's going to feel easy. Finally, my left foot's not gonna pick. I'm gonna stretch down, and put that foot, come into the right hand and lean over and get the foot up and match. I'm still gonna feel fresh. I'll lock that right hand down and stretch the razor. Bump over to the edge, cross under the anchor, and celebrate. Okay, take. Oh, that was a sharp one. And then 
immediately realize that there are two more super hard pitches, but I will celebrate for a minute. 